Hey, y'all, it's Nick from Undefeated Productions. Welcome back to The 3-2 Pitch, our podcast where me and Drew go around and talk about things around the world of baseball. That's right. Opening day is tomorrow as we're recording it. this. Ha ha, psych. It is actually past the trade deadline, and I just realized I did not upload this video. So, this is very funny. Please watch this video. At the end, we have a wager uh, that we make official. So make sure you watch till the end and you hear our little wager. And we will probably be reacting to these picks and giving us you updating picks soon. And yeah, so sorry about these picks being about a hundred and something games late. But I'm getting the video to you guys so you can see where we were and see how wrong we were. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in later videos. Peace out. And as we promised, we're here to give our playoff picks. Uh, we've made a bracket, as you see on screen right now. Uh, I know it looks a little confusing. And Drew, first off, how are you doing? Do you want to explain this uh, bracket that everyone's looking at right now? I'm feeling great, Nick. It is uh, the eve of opening day in baseball. And I, to be honest with you, man, I wasn't sure if we were going to get here. It's been a long road of negotiations, of the players versus the owners versus really society in general, because baseball is technically down when you look at the major markets, when we look at the NBA and the NFL. Uh, but there is nothing like opening day in the, uh, in the major leagues. And I think that's something that you and I appreciate. And I know that others appreciate that too. So as we go into this season, like I mentioned on our last show, we do have an updated uh, playoff structure. And as you can see on the screen, the top two division winners from each league do get a buy. So you're looking at uh, the, the, the team, the division winner that has the most wins. Uh, those, those two top teams from each, division, uh, each league will get a buy. And then the remaining four teams are the third division winner, so the third winningest division winner in that league, along with three other wildcard teams. So a lot of teams that have an opportunity this year, uh, maybe some teams that would have missed the playoffs last year are coming in. So what we're going to be doing today is really showing you what our brackets look like from our previous show. And then we're going to go ahead and make our picks and stay until the end of the video because we have a very interesting wager. Yeah, for sure. So as you're looking at this bracket here, I'm going to explain it quickly. The team on the top is going to be the uh, on the left and right side. Uh, you're, you're looking at it. that team on the top is going to be the one seed and the one at the bottom is going to be the two seed. So the teams to the left on the top are going to be the uh, the uh, five, the four and five seed. And then the bottom, it's the uh, it, it'll be the three and six seed. And then the same for both sides. So as we're talking about it, the one seed will eventually uh, play the four, the four and five seed, and then uh, the two seed will play the three and si the winner of the three and six game. So that's how that's going to work. And then, at, so then that will be, I guess, the wild card round would be the uh, three versus six, four versus five, and then the divisional would be the one versus the winner, and then two versus winner, and then the championship series would be the winner of those games, and same for uh, both leagues, and then of course the World Series as we know it. And remember, so, remember, just to uh, kind of give you a little bit of context, for those of you that remember the COVID year, a couple of years ago, that first round of wild card series, they will be three game series. That's it. With the team that has the best winning percentage of that matchup hosting all three games. So in other words, if that home team wins that first game, all they have to do is win the second game or one of the remaining two games to win the series. But if that home team loses that first game, the pressure is on for them to have to win in a must win situation in a game two. not always an easy task, especially for younger teams that may not have that kind of experience. Okay. So for the American league, uh, the one seed is going to be the blue Jays, the two seeds, the Mariners, the three seeds, the White Sox, the four seeds, the Rays, the five seeds, the Astros, and the six seed is the Red Sox. So that makes our division winners, the Blue Jays as the one, the Mariners as the two, 
and the White Sox as a three. As we told you, as we talked about last week, make sure you guys go watch our last show. We are very, very high on the Mariners and uh, the Blue Jays. And, of course, the Astros lost Carlos Correa, which puts the Mariners in our eyes and a uh, higher up. And uh, also with the Mariners young pitching. Going to the National League, the Dodgers are the one seed. Uh, the Braves are the two seed, Brewers three seed. We have the Mets four, Giants five, and Padres six. And for that, the uh, the Dodgers get the uh, buy in the first round being the one. The Braves get the buy in the second being the two. And then, uh, of course, the the um, the Brewers play the Padres, and then the Mets play the uh, Giants, in, which will be probably the best pick because, you know, Giants versus Mets. We had to set it up that way so we get that rivalry. And you know what? We're going to start it off right here, starting off in the National League, and we're going to do it. Mets, Giants, get, get the drum out of the way first. Well, I have to admit, Nick, and especially for you kids that may have seen the last podcast, I told you so. The Mets already have injuries. They already have them, and we're not even – the bell hasn't even rang yet, dude. Already, Jacob deGrom in jeopardy this season – Something that Nick over here is not happy about, or at least I don't believe is happy about. And Max Scherzer due to miss his first start of the season and probably, you know, might be ready to come back soon. May not miss his start depending on how he feels. But I'm telling you, this is going to be a a rough season for the Mets. They're going to make the playoffs according to our numbers and our stats, basically because of all of the, money that they've put into this team and, and really their offense much improved. But I have to say that the San Francisco Giants are going to be just as dangerous as they were last year. It's going to start this weekend with the Marlins and it's going to continue on. They're not going to win the division because the Dodgers are absolutely stacked, but I will take my chances with the San Francisco Giants with Logan Webb on the mound for a game one amazing performance last year against the Dodgers could not be touched in that series. The only reason the giants lost that series was because their bats basically went silent, but it was not because of their pitching, their pitching. It was, was the strength of the team last year. And it will be the strength of their team this year, especially as they add Carlos Rodon, you bring in different guys that can support the top two in that rotation, bringing back Di Sclafani, bringing back, so many of the guys in the bullpen that had a huge part on that team and they are a team to be reckoned with. The giants will be hot at the end of the season in a hot pursuit with the Dodgers and the Mets are probably going to stroll into the postseason on their wheelchairs. Remember the geriatric convention that I mentioned last podcast when I was rambling along, well, I'm sorry, but this is going to be a short series. The giants are going to sweep this series in two games. Two nothing Giants at Oracle Park. Mark it down. Lock it up. Stone cold. Yeah. And, you know, as a Mets fan, going in, DeGrom is already hurt this year. Already out. June 1st is the best case scenario for him right now. Max Scherzer, the defense is said to uh, basically see when Max Scherzer starts. He could start game two, or he could get skipped to turn in the rotation. Again, this is a minor, minor oblique, or not oblique, hamstring injury, just a tweak. So, like, when he was running, and then he just, like, pulled it a little bit. He's fine. He threw off a bullpen. He played catch today. He will make a start either uh, on Friday or the next turn through the rotation. But the Mets are already injured. You talk about the Mets. We have Sylor McGill. They have an incredible amount of depth. They got Tyler McGill, who at the very first couple starts looked like an ace. Tyler McGill is on the next trajectory of Jacob DeGrom being an older rookie and just has the stuff. You, you compare Tyler McGill and Jacob DeGrom's numbers in the rookie season. They are really, really comparable. Jolly Olive over on YouTube. Uh, he made a great, great video comparing the two of them. And I mean, he's changed my outlook on Tyler McGill and he's starting opening day tomorrow for the Mets, which hopefully doesn't get canceled. It's got the game's gotten pushed twice. Anyways, the Mets season injuries. Yes, they're going to happen, but guess what? The giants are prone to injuries too. I hate to say it. It goes around to every team and you know, we're going to, we're going to do it. The Mets are going to have a one, two of DeGrom and Scherzer coming into the year. And oh, by the way, Chris Bassett, three, three game series. You're not going to punch through against the two best pitchers 
in baseball. Logan Webb and Jacob DeGrom, that is going to be a really, really, really entertaining game. The Mets are actually going to lose game one. And that is going to be because the bullpen blows. Game two and game three, the Mets are going to rally back at Oracle and they're going to win it because they're the Mets. You know, they're pitching. Max Scherzer shut down the Giants in that five-game series last year. Chris Bassett, he's going to be eager to get to the playoffs. He's going to shut him down in game three. The Mets are going to win the, the series in three games. The Giants win the first one because the Mets bullpen blows. So we have the drum out of the way. As you see, this is where we're going with it. Next up, we got Milwaukee versus San Diego. Who do you like here? So as we mentioned in our last podcast, we do think the Padres are going to sneak into the playoffs this year. They are a team that underachieved last year. I think everyone believed that they were going to be one of the favorites, if not the favorite out of the NL West with Fernando Tatis Jr. and Eric Hosmer and all of the young guys that they have brought in and they're pitching. Ooh, everyone was so excited about all the guys they brought in. Clevenger and Snell and you Darvish and just on and on and on. I got news for you. It didn't work. <laughs> it just didn't work. And they had a pretty good start and then just kind of faded down the stretch. Well, this year, Tatis Jr. is out. It's going to be a tough trek for them. But the key for the Padres is Bob Melvin. Bob Melvin coming in as the new manager. He is going to bring a new philosophy to the Padres. They have enough talent on that roster to compete with the Giants, with the Dodgers in the division. Again, another reason why we believe the Padres will make the postseason as a wildcard team is because of how bad the Rockies and the Diamondbacks are going to be. And remember, remember that they play these teams 19 times in division. Uh, another, you know, positive for the Mets. They get to play the Marlins, you know, a number of times. The Nationals. And the Nationals, exactly. Although you never know with the Nationals. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're, they're supposed to be good, bad, and they end up being good. So you just never know with them. But for the most part, we believe the Padres will be able to get in. But the problem with them is they're going to be facing a team in the Brewers that just has too much rotation, too much bullpen, too much offense. I'm sorry, but for me, this is another two-game sweep in Milwaukee. Bring out the cheese curds. Bring out the Miller Lite. How do I know they serve cheese curds at Milwaukee? Because I was there. I went to a series. I went to the NLCS game two in 20. Maybe was it 2019, 2018, or 2019 when the Dodgers beat them? Great city. Awesome, 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 awesome city. The Brewers do win this series in two. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard to pick against the Padres. The Padres, of course, barely sneak in. Bob Melvin's going to help them in the second half of the year. They're not going to have that second half of the year collapse. Clevenger's going to come back from Tommy John. They just traded for Sean Manaya. Uh, so he, he, he came from the A's, you know, Bob Melvin, Sean Manaya, that's a little connection there. And so the Padres, they're going to find their way in. But when you're talking about three game series, and I said this with the Mets, say it again, you're going to have Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, like Adrian Hauser as your one, two, three. Yeah. I mean, that is incredible. You're talking about two Cy Young candidates, you know, and I mean, it's just, you're going to, it's going to be hard to beat it. You know, Blake Snell, he's shaky at times. You Darvish, he's shaky at times. You know, the entire Padres rotation in a 162-game season, they're all going to have, you know, when they're on, ERAs in the mid to high threes. You know, maybe one or two guys in low threes, you know, high, high twos. Talk about playoff games. You're talking about two of the top 10 pitchers in baseball. You're not going to get past it. I know the Padres have a juggernaut of an offense. We talked about the Brewers. They bring in Hunter Renfro. And I feel like that just that helps complete this lineup. The Brewers, they're moving on. They're going to face the Dodgers in this next round where we're going to have the best team in baseball, the Dodgers, play the Brewers. So the Dodgers are going to be a, a tough out for anyone this year. But if there is a team that can beat them in the National League, along with Atlanta and, you know, who knows, maybe the Giants will be up for the task this year. But, man, the Brewers are going to be a matchup for them. The Brewers giving them, you know, over the last few years, a real hard time in the postseason. 
you know, get, getting them to the point of basically on the brink. But ultimately, it's going to come down to the Dodgers lineup. The Dodgers lineup is so deep. And what we found out last year and the year before is that they can go through stretches where they may not have the pitching that's needed to be able to, you know, carry a team to the World Series. But that lineup really never goes away. And adding Freddie Freeman to that lineup with Trey Turner back in his first full season with that confidence and that ability. And then, you know, obviously Mookie Betts and bringing back most of the cast of characters. I think Cody Bellinger is going to come back and have a really great season. Uh, you could see at the end of the year that he was starting to turn the corner. I'm sure that he had a great, you know, off season. Uh, you know, I'm not sure about his numbers in in the spring. 17 strikeouts and 23 at-bats. It's spring training, you know. It is what it is. But I, I do think that he will bounce back. It may not be at the beginning of the season, but he will bounce back. So this is going to be a tough one. It is a five-game series in that first round, divisional round. I like the Dodgers with the home field in five. Yeah, I mean, at this point, tough to pick against the Dodgers. And to me, I look at this like, all right, the Brewers just burned their one and two. And again, we don't know how many days are going to be between the uh, the, the games. Uh, so how many are going to days going to be between games one, two, three, and then the next the next week. So the Dodgers, they're going to be fresh. And again, you got to keep in mind that rest sometimes hurts teams. So we don't know how long this rest period is going to be. And the Brewers are going to have burned their one and two pitchers. So that's going to hurt them. And the Dodgers are going to end up easily taking this series. You know, unfortunately, I'm a Brewer. I go go Brewers. We both hate the Dodgers. But the Dodgers, I, I can't pick against them. The Dodgers are moving on here. Next up, uh, in your case, you're going to have Atlanta versus San Francisco. I have Atlanta versus New York Mets. Who you got in this one? This is a great matchup. This is what I wanted to see last year. You know, I, I thought that this was a destined series especially when the Giants, you know, got off to a good start against the Dodgers, won that game one, you know, lost game two in a tough matchup, but went back to Dodger Stadium and pulled off a, a miraculous game three with the, um, you know, the wind blowing like crazy uh, in at L.A. I don't know if you remember that game, but it was basically Candlestick South, Evan Longoria with the solo shot uh, into the bleachers, and then one of the greatest plays you'll ever see, Brandon Crawford, a leaping catch of basically what was going to be a game-tying hit to win that game in game three. And as a Giants fan, you felt really good at that moment. But then the Dodgers kind of just took the series over with their pitching, with their strategy, with their starter, you know, with Dave Roberts really kind of, you know, controlling the narrative in game five with Urias and just, you know, Canadal starting the game and, and really kind of, you know, bringing Scherzer in to finish it off. It was just kind of a perfect storm for the Giants who their bats just kind of hit the hit a rough spot at a bad time. As far as the Braves go, man, what a season. Incredible season. Great young talent. I think the Giants have what it takes to win this one. They are going to be on a mission this year. They're going to be they're They've already bolstered their pitching staff, bringing in Radome, you know, bringing in guys like we've talked about Cobb, these guys that are there along with Wood, Disclafani, Webb, another season of Camilo Duvall, a great young bullpen, a, you know, weapons from the left side, from the right side, a great bench. I think the DH is really going to help out the Giants this year because of the depth that they have uh, in, on their team, including Darren Ruff you know, including guys like Jock Peterson that are really going to make a difference from the right and the left side in their platoon. Their, their bats have really woken up at the end of the spring. So I'm expecting a good season out of the Giants. I'm expecting 90 wins at least. And I think they're going to go into the playoffs on a good roll. They're going to get, you know, they're going to go through the Mets. They're going to roll through them. And I see the Giants, even, it, even as the team going into Atlanta in an epic five-game series, Camilo Duvall, Camilo Duvall coming in for a two inning save in a game five at Atlanta to get the Giants to the NLCS for a rematch with the L.A. Dodgers and some revenge. Yeah, and, you know, looking at this, I don't think as an NL East fan, as a Mets fan, I can hate a matchup. 
and love a matchup at the same time. And going in right now, I'm like, okay, the winner of this series right now is going to be whoever wins the season series between the Mets and the Braves. Mm -hmm. And who knows what who, who that's going to be. You know, we're looking at this 162 games in advance. Mm -hmm. You know, 100 and 200 something days in advance. We're going to be like, we could be totally wrong. The Mets could be the one seed for all we know. The Braves, you know, get a couple could, injuries. They don't the miss the division. playoffs. Yeah. yeah, the Mets could make miss the, the playoffs. The Giants could. Anyone could miss the playoffs. We don't know what's going to happen. So, let alone predicting the season series. However, we talk about that rest and how that hurts teams. This Braves team was a team last year where when you look at them, they got on a roll. They stayed on a roll. They're going to have momentum coming into the playoffs, but this rest is going to end up hurting them. Teams don't like to rest. When they rest longer, they get hurt. They just burn themselves. It's like, okay, who am I playing? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And they come out. They don't come out firing on all cylinders. With that being said, the Mets versus the Braves, whoever wins the season series, with that being said, the Mets are going to move on here. The Braves are going to not fire on all cylinders. They're going to be jet lag. They're going to be whatever they're going to be. Teams that rest are not going to do it. This is the first time we're seeing this format, and they're going to get burned. You know, I, that's just – I have a hinge. Like, I have this feeling. I have a hunch. You know, I don't – I get them sometimes. Sometimes I don't. There's there's going to be one team this year that is going to be in this, you know, scenario, scenario and that's going to be the Braves. Again, the reason I, kind, I think I feel this – the Braves got so hot last year. They stayed that a break of a couple of days is not going to help them. They are going to get burned. The Mets are going to move on to face the Dodgers in the championship series. Mets, Dodgers, Giants, Dodgers. Who you got in this one? Well, this is where the buck stops for the Gigantes, uh, unfortunately. And I do agree with you, Nicholas, that you're going to see some surprises. And uh, and I think the Giants coming out and beating Atlanta is, fr quite frankly, that would be a surprise to Major League Baseball. And, and I think you will see that. And I mentioned that in our first podcast of this new year, when we first brought this format up, that you're going to see teams that you may not expect, like we'll talk about in the American League. You're going to see teams that are going to come out that are, uh, you, you know, you, you're going to be a little surprised. Unfortunately, in a, in a five-game series, you know, the Giants may have had a chance against the Dodgers. In a seven-game series, it is not going to be uh, a very comfortable one for the Giants. Uh, the, the big problem is the Dodgers basically wear you down uh, the longer a series goes. And we started to see that happen last year in games four and five. In a seven-game series, it can, that can be a big problem, especially if the Dodgers get that one seed, which I do expect. Uh, but I, I do say, uh, in this case, not a complete sweep, but a gentleman sweep, the Dodgers in Five, and believe me that pains me yeah and you know this one's tough because i look at this team and we look about the dodgers and where they flaw the dodgers are susceptible to early victories and when the longer a series goes you can just basically may as well throw all your money on the dodgers oh, yeah. series gets to six games seven games count the dodgers to win like mm -hmm. they're going to win the Dodgers are susceptible to losing the first couple games, and it's only a matter of momentum from there. That being said, the Mets are going to have to go through. They're going to burn their three starters. They come back to the Braves and might lose a game or two there. They're going to have to burn their starters again. We're not going to have DeGrom or Scherzer in the first couple games. Maybe Scherzer because this dude's not human. This dude throws 90 pitches in spring training but as his hamstring fall off, this dude had arm fatigue at the end of the year. The Dodgers, who knows what injuries they're going to be come up with because we know the Dodgers, they always have someone get hurt. Kershaw in the playoffs is always a factor. But that being said, the Dodgers are going to go to the World Series. That's right. The Dodgers are beating the Mets. I mean, we have a wager on the line. Man, like I got, I got to put something out there, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Mets somehow like stack their rotation and get Degrom and Scherzer one two. The Mets are going to move on. It's going to rely on how many pitchers they have to spend between the wild card round and the championship series. If they get Degrom, Scherzer one two, they're going to win. 
but I don't see that happening. I see that where these teams line up, it's not going to happen. Dodgers, they're moving on to the World Series, man. That's painful for me to say, and I know that's painful for you to say because, man, we both hate the Dodgers. Moving on to the American League now. We got the Chicago White Sox and Boston Red Sox. I see a redemption tour for the Chicago White Sox. I see a team that, like you've mentioned many times, is getting better. You've got young, amazing talent on this roster. Their pitching may have taken a little bit of a hit, but you can see that they're continuing to grow and build as an organization. Tony La Russa coming back with another year at the helm. I think this is, a, this is going to be a really important year for the White Sox, and I see them strolling in to the second round of the playoffs with a two-game sweep over the Red Sox. Bye-bye, Boston. Yeah, I mean, like, you talk about this White Sox team, Lucas Giolito, Lance Lynn. We're talking about the Red Sox here and their pitching. It's a lot sketchier with Nathan Eovaldi, who's shown he's been dominant, Chris Sale, who shows he can be dominant. And then you have the White Sox, Giolito, Lance Lynn, Dylan C. Sleeper, Cy Young candidate, can strike out 200-something people. He's nasty. Drafted him on one of my fantasy leagues. But talk about this White Sox team. They're going to be hungry. The Red Sox, Trevor Story, good addition. His first time in the playoffs. You know they're going to have injuries. The White Sox, young. They want this. The White Sox, they're moving on the next round. Next round, next up, we got another rematch, Houston versus Tampa. And this is where you see Houston losing Carlos Correa, you know, losing Zach Grinke. This is going to be an interesting year for the Astros. We have them making the postseason together, mainly because we don't necessarily feel like the Angels or the Rangers are going to have enough to be able to get to the postseason this year. And we definitely don't have a wild card team out of the AL Central. So just by kind of osmosis, just by being in the league, just that championship experience and pedigree that the Astros have, we believe they're going to get there. But I do not think they're going to get out of this round. And I think the Rays, again, coming back, they are, they are basically a staple in the American League. They've, they've got pretty much everything that you want on a team. They bring back basically the same band. And then, you know, of course, just incredible young talent. They're, they're on a mission. They're not going to get all the way this year, but I think that this series goes three games. And at the trop, the Rays pull it off in an epic matchup. They probably win that last game in extra innings on a walk-off. Yeah, I mean, the Tampa Bay Rays, man. They're a team that just does everything right. And they did trade Austin Meadows, but every time they trade somebody, it's like, okay. Who, by the way, is a friend of the show. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Austin Meadows' cousin, by the way. This is a subscriber to mine on Twitch. Austin Meadows has watched this show before. Austin, if you're watching, thanks for watching. But he's on the Tigers now playing with his brother, Parker. So go, you know, that's a, that's a tandem to be watching out for in a couple of years that we like, I like the Tigers. I don't think we're going to make the playoffs, but I like them. Yeah. We like the Tigers. They're a young team. And you talk about these young teams, look at the Mariners, look what what the uh, Blue Jays did last year. If you think the patterns repeat, then next year, you know, maybe see you in 365 days. We might have a, a new team in this list, but anyway, the Astros, if they were able to hold on Correa, they would have had one final shot. I look at this Astros team and I'm like, there's not much there anymore. They have young pitchers plus Verlander, who's like really old. And then the Rays, you got to do everything right. It's, it's hard to pick against the Rays in this round. Three-game series, you know, when was the last time the Rays lost a three-game series, you know? If you can figure that out, then maybe the Astros have a chance. I don't know. So the Rays, they're moving on. All righty. We have the Toronto Blue Jays versus the Chicago White Sox. I like the Blue Jays, Nick. I, I, I like them. I think they are the real deal. I think bringing in Gosman is, a, is going to be huge for them, especially if you can find that splitter. I think their lineup is deep. I think bringing in Matt Chapman is the cherry on top. I think they are a team nobody wants to face this year. They're going to have all that momentum from the end of last year. 
I think they beat up on the White Sox and they sweep them in three games. And they head into the ALCS with some major momentum. I like the Blue Jays this year. No, this is the part of the show where we don't take, like, before, by the way, this is something we probably mentioned on a past show. We don't share our picks. You know, before we're like, we might, oh, yeah, we have an idea. Sometimes I just make this up as I go. I have an idea and, you know, talking about it, thinking about it, hearing Drew say what he's got. Then that makes me be like, okay, you know, I like this team. I like this team over this team. This is something completely unscripted. I love the Blue Jays. Blue Jays are hungry. They've done everything right practically this offseason. They brought in Matt Chapman. They brought in Gosman. They have Alec Manoa. Their their bullpen is a bunch of guys. You might not have heard their names, but they're going to be good. Oh, by the way, you say Kikuchi, Barrios, Ryu. I mean, this team is good. Nate Pearson, former top 10 prospect in baseball, threw, guy throws 102. He'll be in the bullpen, potentially uh, patching starts. I mean, this lineup is just crazy. Gurriel, Springer, Teoscar Hernandez. I mean, Matt Chapman, Vladdy Bobachette, Biggio, you know, Danny Jansen behind the plate. I mean, this team is just amazing. And they're at a point. I can't pick against the Blue Jays, man. I mean, this team is better than any Blue Jays team that I can remember. You know, I'm only 18 years old, so, you know, it's not hard to do. But Blue Jays, man, they're going to hand it to the White Sox. Again, the White Sox, they have to burn Giulietta. They have to burn Lynn. Back in the White Sox rotation, eh, kind of sketchy. Blue Jays, they're going to steamroll the White Sox. They're moving on to the next round. Next up, we got the Tampa Bay Rays versus the Seattle Mariners. Wow, it's going to be an interesting series at the very least. I think that as we look at Seattle, this is a tough matchup for them. It's going to be their first time in the postseason in a very long time. And while they're going to have that mental high of getting there, the, the Mariners are stacked this year. They are looking really good. I mean, just think about what they're doing. They're bringing in their top pick. You know his name, Nicholas. Julio Rodriguez. Has been named to the starting lineup or the has been named basically to their um, roster to start the season. And they, he's, he's going to be a huge piece for them. But having said all that, the experience of the Rays, knowing how to navigate through a series, I like the Rays in this one in four but a great introduction to the postseason for the Ray, uh, for the Mariners to be able to get that experience and bring that into next season. But I do like the Rays to match up against the Blue Jays in a classic ALCS. Yeah, and this is where, you know, I mean, I'm glad you picked the, the, the Rays because I was like, I don't want to be the exact same. I'm going different here. I was thinking about this. The Blue the, the not the Blue Jays, the Mariners – they're just like the Blue Jays. They're hungry. 90-win team last year. I mean, Safeco Field, T-Mobile Park, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know the name of it. It's one of the two. T-Mobile Park. T-Mobile Park now. It used to be Safeco. That place was electric, the final game 162 to get, 161 and 160. That place was crazy. Fans want baseball back. The players want postseason baseball, excuse me, back in Seattle they're getting it, and it's not going to stop there. The, the, the Mariners, they're going to figure something out. They're going to upset the Rays, and the Mariners are going to move on. I mean, these youngsters, Julio Rodriguez, sleeper pick for, I think, MVP this year. This dude is absolutely electric. He's won a couple MVPs in his career. He probably should win Rookie of the Year, but he's absolutely going to go off. He's going to eat up the Rays pitching staff and we know the Rays pitching staff they're good but it's just a matter of how much how long can they hold on again we all thought that they had the uh, Astros easy and they kind of folded towards the end barely snuck on held on beat the Astros the Mariners man they only have they only need three wins I think the Mariners easily can get three wins over the Rays Mariners versus Blue Jays that's who I got going on Blue Jays Rays for you I got Mariners Blue Jays who you like here I love, I love, and I love the Blue Jays. I think they are an up-and-coming team. 
I think they're going to win multiple championships in this decade. And I think they are going to get a taste of it this year. The Toronto Blue Jays with their massive, amazing, incredible lineup and the pitching that they haven't had in the past. The Toronto Blue Jays are going to get to the World Series and it's going to happen in a dramatic game seven with no one else other than the clutch, the incredible Bo Bichette finishing it off with a game winning double into the right center field gap. The Blue Jays win game seven of the NLCS eight to seven over the Rays to get to the World Series to play the Dodgers in a series that the Dodgers will have to travel across the border to play again in that amazing, incredible atmosphere they have at the Rogers Center. I like the Blue Jays this year to get to the World Series. All righty. So here we are. The probably what I'm going to say is going to be the best series and we talk about rivalries this is going to be a postseason rivalry for years and years to come we talk about giants dodgers you know the kind of the way the the braves and the dodgers have battled the last couple of years mariners blue jays become familiar with them battling each uh, battling each other in the next couple of years talking about two really young teams. 10 years yeah, I mean, two young teams, two just established teams. They got the veterans. It, you're going to have Robbie Ray facing his old team where he won a Cy Young Award. You know there's going to be fierce competition between the two. These young Mariners, I mean, I am a – either way, I may as well flip a coin here. But I have a feeling the Mariners are hungry. 20-something years in the making, the Mariners are moving on to the World Series – dramatic seven game fashion i mean it's crazy i mean the blue jays we talk about this team i feel like going down the line barrios we don't know how consistent he's going to be gosman second half of the year he started to fall off manila we don't always get out of him kikuchi you know ryu we know he's solid he's going to be considerable but looking at this mariners team they're going to come up they're going to step up to the plate seven games robbie ray He's going to be coming out game seven. You know, he's going to be ready in this like incredibly tight, lucky pants, as we call them. That just like, I don't know how he gets them on. The Mariners are moving on to the World Series to face the Dodgers. Mark by word. Which makes, brings us here to the point World Series. And we have a wager on this. So, our, ki- our wager for this one, kids, hold it up, Nicholas. Nicholas is a huge fan of A&W root beer, and so am I. I'm on a diet from regular beer because my doctor said if I drink one more beer, I'm probably going to die. So, and as Nicholas knows, we have a game that we're going to in? San Francisco. It's coming up in May, right? Yeah. So Yeah, about that game. Drew didn't end up going because he got COVID and ended up being that epic 13-12 walk-off win by the Giants. Best game ever we will be going to a game and i'm going to break my doctor's rules on that night as nicholas knows i like to have my beers when i'm at the game but we both like a and w root beer we're gonna bet two cases of a and w root beer from costco and this is how the wager is going to work if nicholas's team wins the world series and mine doesn't for the winner and they are going to be different i automatically lose and i have to go to costco and film myself selfie style buying the AW root beer going through the line telling the checker at the front of costco that i lost a bet to a high schooler and nicholas would have to say the same thing he lost to a principal in a middle school and then you we we cut we show it on the show and then of course the bragging rights forever okay now if that's that's if Nicholas wins and I lose. If my team wins and he loses, he has to do the same thing. He has to go to Costco, get the two cases of AW root beer. And don't forget, you have to bring it to the person's house. So that means I have to drive my ass all the way back to um, where does he live again? Sunnyvale or Cupertino. 
and I can never find his damn house. So, and he doesn't give me directions. So I gotta, I gotta find it on my own. He knows what I'm talking about. And, it, and, it, and on the other side of it, Nicholas is gonna have to drive over here to San Jose, even if he doesn't have his license yet and bring me those root beers. And he's gonna have to open the case and give one to my kids and watch them enjoy it just at the same time. But the final caveat of this, and it's almost like a bonus, if somehow, some way, miraculously, those stupid New York Mets win the World Series, I not only have to get the AMW root beer, but I have to wear a Mets jersey. And if Nicholas loses in any case, he has to wear a Yankees jersey. Ooh, that's gross. That's our wager, kids. Enjoy. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that uh, driving around part, I, that brings back memories. I remember just doing what I'm doing, just dying laughing as he drives around in circles looking for my house. Oh, now that is speak. That was after we got garlic chicken supreme pizza from round table and doing things. Oh, those are the good days. I remember that. That brought back, back, brought back a lot of memories. Whew. All right. Yankees jersey if I lose. Mets jersey if you lose. W A and W root beer delivered to each other's house. Vlog style. Two everything cases. on the podcast. Two cases of it. You guys are in, in for a fun episode. Now, our World Series pick. We got the Dodgers versus the Blue Jays. And you're, you're in. My end. Dodgers versus the Mariners. So, Dodgers is a common a denominator. And then the AL East team different who do you got here who do you like who is your pick to help you win this wager well i've been thinking about this for a couple days and i started thinking immediately my mind drifted to last season and i remember when the dodgers got through the gauntlet of the san francisco giants which they were and they got to that series in atlanta they had absolutely nothing left and that was because the Giants basically, you know, contracted every bit of energy, of strategy, of focus. And the Dodgers went into that series and they just basically laid an egg. They, they dropped those first two games in Atlanta. And then in game three, I mean, they were down for the count if it wasn't for a pretty miraculous comeback by the Dodgers. But then the, the Braves come back and win a game four. They lose a game five, but come back to Atlanta and take care of business in game six to close the Dodgers out. This year, the Dodgers are going to get that first round by, but they are going to have a tough road. The Brewers are no easy task, who they're probably going to end up playing in the first round. They're, they, may, they may sweep the series. They may win it in four. It's going to be a tough series for them. And then when they play the Giants, even though I have them at a, as a gentleman's sweep, the Giants put together some of the best at bats that you'll see in the league. They have some of the best coaches in the league. Gabe Kapler and his team, they are focused. They know exactly how to really get the most out of their players. And even if they lose those games, they're going to be close games. They're not going to be blowouts. There may be one or two blowouts in there, but it's going to be down to the wire, very stressful baseball. By the time the Dodgers get to the World Series, they are again going to not have much left in the tank. And this is the year that the Toronto Blue Jays in six games are going to win the World Series and bring back the Commissioner's Trophy across the border to win their third championship in the history of the organization. They've got the pitching, they've got the defense, and most importantly, they've got the best lineup in baseball. And they remind me a lot, a lot of the 2017 and 2018 Houston Astros. The, the, the similarities just are, are there for you to see. They've got, the, they've got power. They've got defense. Matt Chapman is a very extremely underrated as a defensive player. I know that he's gotten gold gloves in the past but I don't think people realize what impact he's going to have on that infield. And then the athleticism, George Springer, you know, having a full season, not being hurt, being healthy. 
this is a team that is going to be very, like you mentioned, going to be very difficult to bet against. I'm shocked that you picked the Mariners to beat them. I don't think the Mariners are ready for that stage yet. I think they'll get there, but I don't think they're ready for the stage yet. And the Toronto Blue Jays, boys and girls, will be feeding me two cases of a root beer and will make Nicholas wear that New York Yankees jersey for the very first show of next year's podcast. The Toronto Blue Jays will win the World Series. Yeah, and I mean, we're going to have another common denominator. You say with me, the Dodgers cannot win a real World Series. They sure can't. They can win any fake World Series. The one in 2020 has an asterisk next to its name, by the way. That that trophy is going to Seattle. First World Series trophy of the franchise. Coming home to Seattle, baby. Talking about these guys, Julio Rodriguez, Jared Kelenic, Mitch Hanniger, always clutch, Ty France, J.P. Crawford, you know, Robbie Ray, man, in this rotation. This team is young. You might not know the guys. Eugenio Suarez and Winker, by the way, they're on that team now. Well, they're going to make a huge difference. I mean, these are power bats that are going to play really, really well in warm Dodger Stadium and in T-Mobile Park. I mean, this team is built. Like I said, they're, they're, they, they might not seem right now ready for the stage. 162 games. When they're feeding on these teams in the American League, the top feeders, they get to play the Astros a bunch. They get to see Otani a couple of times. You know, they get to see the the uh, Rangers with Semyon and um, and Corey Seager, who both, by the way, in the playoffs recently, they get to see the Yankees. They get to see the White Sox. They get to see the Blue Jays. They get to see the Rays. That, you know, they get to see all these really, really good teams. They're going to cherish those moments. They're going to build those moments. They're going to have a game plan. They're going to go out. The Dodgers can't win a real World Series. I don't know. I don't care how many games this 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 goes. The Dodgers will not win the World Series. You know, whatever team beats them, it could be the Mets in the World Series winning the World Series. In which case, I may still probably put this team over the Mets because the Mets last time in the World Series they just fell apart. To be honest, just don't don't remind me. Anyways. The Mariners, it's their time. First time, you know, first time, and they're going to be dangerous. And I can't wait to watch it. You know, Kalenic, I'm pulling for you, man. Brody Van Wagen did the Mets dirty training for Cano and Diaz. Probably one of the most heartbeaten closer, pit, closing pitchers in baseball. I hate when he comes in because he always blows the game. But I have the Mariners. Great team, great season. It's time to get that first World Series trophy. B L A. And I think, I think just to put a bow on this one, Nicholas and I both believe wholeheartedly that the Toronto Blue Jays and the Seattle Mariners are going to dominate, absolutely dominate baseball for the next 10 years. And this is the start of that. This is the start of, of, of an amazing and incredible run for these two organizations. Well, I don't know if the video caught that. We're having some technical difficulties, of course, at the very end of the, the thing. Thank you all, you guys, so much for watching. Drew says that hopefully he wins. He wants this a and root beer, and he wants to see me in a Yankees jersey. You know, look at this guy celebrating. He has to drink root beer because real beer is not good for you. Kids, don't drink beer. It's bad for you. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, signing off, Nick and Drew. See you in the next one. Peace out.